securing loneliness comes from the value that you provide to others. You're gonna learn why that sentence that I just said is gonna transform your life. This video is a complete guide. If you wanna become more popular than ever and you wanna have a vibrant social circle around you, this is for you. If you're the type of guy who usually misses out on social events and you're a little jealous when you see that other people are going to the fun stuff. If you've struggled with making friends, especially with guys who are like-minded and have similar goals to you. If you've got no one to share your accomplishments with or to keep you accountable, or maybe you've got no one believing in you. And finally, if you've never experienced the beauty of leadership. What you're going to learn in this course might actually transform your life. So if you follow the guide, you follow the stages, this is what your life is going to look like. You're going to have male friends who are on the same wavelength as you and you're going to grow with them. That means you're not going to need to follow the standard advice to make friends that you see online, especially on the red pill, which is usually just, oh, are you lonely? Just go join an MMA club, bro. That's as good as the advice I've ever seen gets, and that's pretty trash advice. You'll be making friends with guys who are similar to you, which means that they'll probably have the same goals as you. That's awesome because you're gonna have fun working hard achieving these goals with those friends that you make. You're gonna have that kind of startup vibe where you, you create some kind of business with your friends, you've got roommates, you're all young and dumb and you're just trying to achieve the same dream together. I think that those are the years that you're gonna remember for the rest of your life. You're gonna look back with a smile on your face when you think about those buddies that you just try to make a business with. Hopefully this guide is going to change your mindset towards having friends because a lot of the guys I'm speaking to, especially again on the red pill, have this lone wolf mentality that, oh, they don't, they don't need friends. And the thing is, honestly, you don't need friends. You can live life without them. But is that ideal? Is that as best as life could be? Hopefully through what you learn in this guide, you're going to realize, nah, it, it it's, you know, I'm okay with not really having many friends, but if I could have a vibrant social circle of guys who like me, guys who've got similar goals to me, that would be the best case scenario. You're going to realize how to do all of this in the middle of the COVID quarantine. So lockdown is not an excuse because best of all, you're learning from a guy who has done this himself. Exactly one year ago, I was incredibly lonely and now I'm at the time where I feel the most popular and social ever. I'm going to teach you exactly how to have the same transformation as me and chances are you're watching this when the lockdown is going to start to get eased which means that it's actually going to be easier for you following this guide going through the stages is going to make you happier relationships in all of the studies and the resources seems to be a major source of happiness more than the usual goals that we set for ourselves and best of all and best of all the quality relationships that you're gonna make will actually help you towards those other goals even faster going through the social stages which i'm going to walk you through is going to make you feel like you're part of the pack you're going to feel part of the community you're going to feel stronger and more connected and only if you're up for it the last stage stage five is going to teach you how to become the tribe leader. The tribe will be yours. I know that that sounds crazy, but I am a dumbass and I was able to accomplish it. So let's begin. I'm going to take you onto my computer screen now. I'm going to be doing some drawings so that you can just better understand what I'm about to teach you. We're going on to budget Alex Becker mode. So we're going to start with stage one. And this stage is called recluse. Put your hand up class, who knows what a recluse is. So this is where most guys are gonna start and quite frankly, your ego is gonna make you believe that you're not in this stage, but you probably are. Most guys I know are personally in this stage. This stage is where the internet is your biggest problem. You don't spend much time outdoors. You don't spend much time away from your computer chair. So I want you to think right now, is the most common place you're, you sit and you live your computer chair, something to do with the screen, maybe your phone, maybe your computer, your laptop. Is that the most common thing that you do most days? Because for the overwhelming majority of people, it is. Now I can hand up and say, yes, I have an internet addiction. Although I'm not in this stage, I have an internet addiction and I'm on a dopamine detox. So please, I hope that you can also say, you know what? Yeah, I've got an internet addiction too. He's right. He's probably talking about me. So at least if you can lower your ego down to that level, you can start to progress. But maybe if you're in this stage, maybe you don't want to. Many guys in this stage call themselves the lone wolf. This I've seen heavily on Reddit, especially on the red pill. This idea of, okay, I'm a, I'm a masculine guy. You can't trust other people. I'll do it all myself. Remember what I said at the start of this video, you can do it by yourself. It is possible. You can actually do it by yourself if you want to. Fair enough. But you're here because you're onto self-improvement. You're here because you don't just want to be good enough. You don't just want to breeze through life and you want, it, you want to take on the extra challenges because you want the extra rewards. Being the lone wolf is just saying, oh, I won't go through the effort of leveling up my social skills because 
it's too much effort. I'd rather just do it by myself. Why not just put in the effort to start moving through the stages? At least experience life being popular and then choose if you wanna be lone wolf or not. And so in this stage, stage one recluse, the biggest problem for you is the heavy internet use. And this, it's two reasons. There's, there's two practical reasons. So the first one is just time. You're spending most of your time on the internet. If you're spending eight hours a day, maybe probably more for most guys watching, you don't have the time to then make friends. The internet is your biggest problem because of the virtual achievements that you can get. You don't need the benefits of the social life because it's all emulated in the, the virtual world. Because let's talk about video games. How many times have I mentioned that video games manipulate men? Because think about it, you don't need friends in real life. You don't need to pursue it when you're getting that, that sense of brotherhood and achievements and status in the video game. So games like Call of Duty, like Fortnite, like RuneScape and World of Warcraft, FIFA, pretty much all games you can think of emulate what you crave in real life and you're satisfying that craving. So now you don't have the craving to go and get it in real life. So the more time you're spending on the internet, the more time you're doing things like video games or social media, the less of a need you have to, to move on. And this is why the lone wolf is in this stage because the lone wolf has an internet addiction. The lone wolf feels okay without the social life because the lone wolf plays fucking video games and goes on social media. Even though the lone wolf is usually the guy who says, oh no, I'm, I'm, an, I'm an entrepreneur, I work 17 hours a day. No, you don't. Most of that time is on shallow tasks when you're just scrolling through Instagram trying to promote your business. But going on to things like Instagram and seeing the likes and the validation makes it feel like you don't actually need to do the, the remainder of the stages because you're getting the fake stimulus anyway. And so this is a very tricky spot to be in because you could just remain here for the rest of your life because it's not that bad you're still getting a bit of the stimulus from the virtual world so how do we get you to move on from stage one to stage two and it's gonna sound very very basic but the the answer to this is to go on a walk now you're probably getting a bit annoyed because you were expecting something magical literally go on a walk every single day if you're in stage one as a recluse, this is the most important habit that you could build right now. Is You'll see the other habits as well and you'll realize why, but this is the one thing, just one thing you should be focusing on. Go on a walk, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, maybe an hour, whatever you want. Just get outside your house each and every day because your mother was right. It is because of that damn phone. It is because of that damn computer that you're feeling lonely and depressed. You need to be outside to meet people who are outside. You can't meet new new friends right now just through the internet. N new, like, real friends. Yeah, you could go onto Reddit and ask if anyone wants to play League of Legends with you or something, but real friends in your area, you're only going to meet them if you start going outside. And so the fantastic way to do that is to start just making it a new daily habit to go on a walk. Now, I won't stress this more. If you're in this stage and hopefully you've got the clarity and you don't have such an ego that you can't admit it, the one piece of advice I'll give you before we move on is to look into Atomic Habits. This is exactly the resource that will change it for you. And in fact, what you can do is get an Audible membership. So it's literally like for free with the free trial, whatever it is, it's like seven pounds, just buy it, man. Get the Audible book of this and then start making this a new habit where you listen to this audiobook when you go on your day walk. And this guy, this, this by here is by James Clear. He's gonna teach you how to build a new habit and that's exactly what you need to start this habit of walking. The purpose of this walk, first of all, we just need you outside of your house because that's where the people are. But what we're gonna do with the walk is what's called progressive overload. Now, if you're into the gym, if you're into weightlifting, you know what this means. Progressive overload means that you're gonna start small and over time, over the weeks and months, you're gonna increase the intensity and the volume of what you're doing. And what we're gonna use this for is not just the walk, although it would be nice to, you know, over time walk longer and, and faster. But what we're using this for is, is for the pleasantries that you're gonna to say to people. Pleasantries are like the basic stuff that when you walk past a stranger, instead of being like a Manelli, Man how do you say that word? Manelial, the retards on their phones, all the, like the young people. Instead of being like one of them with the incel neck, just neck down looking at the phone. What you're gonna now start to do, at first, start with just going on the walk. That's, that's like the first part of this. Just go on the walk, forget about everything else. Just make sure you're, oh, I can't even write man. Just make sure you're going on the walk. Then what you're gonna start to do is hold eye contact. 
I know this this sounds so simple and you're gonna be thinking like okay this guy's like taking the piss he's literally telling me to to hold eye contact with people if you're identifying as being with this stage you actually probably don't have great eye contact even though your ego is gonna make you believe like oh yeah I'm, I'm i'm really confident you probably don't because eye contact and stuff like pleasantries it's a skill and it most of us have not been leveling it and most of us have not been leveling this skill for the past while because we've just been staying in on the internet all day so you're gonna do this move on to eye contact and then you're gonna move up to just saying hi to people you see where i'm going eventually from hi you might say good morning you might ask them a question and so this you could do all this within the space of a couple of weeks and it's gonna seem below you this is the this is the issue with a lot of self-improvements is that the people who need it the most won't do it because it seems so basic and un unbeneficial for them and so i hope that if you think even slightly that you're in this position you will make progress if you can just lower your ego and think you know what i could this doing all of this it probably would benefit me and so I'm going to I'm going to do it right now. I feel like I'm somewhat of a social guy. Practicing this stuff would benefit me. My eye contact is not is not great. Honestly, my eye contact is not perfect. I often have to remind myself, oh yeah, eye contact is a thing. Often I'll walk past someone and I won't even say hi. I'm, I'm literally like that guy just on his phone or, you know, like purposely not looking at them until they look at me. Even I need to do this stuff. And so hopefully you've got like the, the reduced ego to say, okay, Hamza seems like a confident guy. If he's saying that, you know, his eye contact's not perfect, then I've, yeah, of course, my eye contact can't be perfect too. It's, you know, I could certainly improve it. Good. This is how we start. So you're gonna do progressive overload with these things as you go on a daily walk and just put your trust in this. At this stage, put your trust in this book. And I highly suggest you just listen to the audiobook whilst you go onto the walk because it's like two in one. So that is the first stage done. Stage one of being a recluse the, the main thing right now, the main issue is obviously the internet, but honestly, the main issue is ego because no one wants to identify with being in this stage. And so ego is going to stop you from actually getting out of this stage because you're just, you've all, to be honest, if you're, if you've got the ego, you've already clicked away. So hopefully actually you're watching this because you've watched all of what I've said so far, you probably don't have much of, much of a problem of this. So fantastic. So now we can move on to stage two. Stage two is social skills and practice. So if you're watching this, if you're watching self-improvement YouTubers, you are not the natural. Let's just be honest. You're not that guy who you kind of know who, you know, who, he doesn't read, but he was in the right environment and he had that positive feedback loop from doing this stuff when he was a child. And so it's normal to him now. He doesn't actually have to learn this stuff. You're watching this because you do. So at this stage, stage two of social skills and practice, the most important thing you need right now is a burning desire to learn if you can create this in yourself if you can create a burning desire to learn about self-improvement about social skills you are set because if you can just keep on telling yourself okay i want to be a lifelong student learning about social skills learning about influence learning about leadership if that excites you 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 probably don't even need the rest of this guide now you could keep watching so you've you know you could benefit from the stages but if you can just force that into yourself you're going to benefit so much now the issue which i usually see with guys at this point is that they don't actually care about it that you know they've got the burning desire to benefit from social skills but they think learning is like cringy they think learning like why, why would i learn now the guys who have the desire to be better at social skills but don't want to learn about it are usually guys who are still in the education system they're in university or they're in college and these are the guys who don't want to learn these are the guys who don't want to read because to them learning equals what they've been doing in school and most people would agree that the learning that you do in school is very very like just trash compared to the learning that you do after school if you actually you know build this burning desire to learn because what you do after school is completely up to you no one's forcing you to start learning no one's forcing you to do this so if you're gonna do this you're gonna have such a burning desire to do it you're gonna find it so incredibly interesting and you're gonna find it baffling how other people around you aren't leveling up their social skills if you're in this stage right now if you're in the education system if you're in university or if you're in college you probably want to skip this step because you already feel like you read a lot you already feel like oh wait why would i learn about social skills because i you know i have to learn for my university assignment so if i'm going to do any kind of reading i'll just read for my you know assignment and stuff that's what so many people 
Pablo said to me, and that's a very, very bad mindset because what they say is, oh, reading, nah, because I've got to read for uni. And so if I'm going to do any reading time, it should be for uni. But then what happens is they don't do any reading at all because they weren't going to do it for university up until a day before the deadline anyway. And so if you're a student, do not have this mindset. If you're a student already and you feel like you're overswamped with work from university, don't think of that as learning. Think of th this is learning. University and, and the education system is, maybe I'm going on a rant, the university education system is not the type of learning that we're doing here. This is for your own benefit. This is, you're going to find this interesting. If you've watched this far of the video, you're going to find what I'm suggesting here very, very interesting. So I highly suggest you don't make the excuse of like, oh, but, but I'm a student and I've got to learn for university. So I'll just learn for university instead of learning social skills. So in this stage, we're going to focus on learning and practicing. And so you're going to learn through the basic mainstream social skills because honestly those are good enough they're, they're better than okay we've got how to win friends and influence people is the absolute like guideline this is like the absolute godlike book for social skills and so if you just get this one book and invest your time into it start taking notes and using it practically your social skills are going to improve and notice why this stage is titled social skills plus practice because most people will just stay with the learning most people will literally just read the book and then nothing else. And I've spoke to a bunch of guys like this when they come onto the calls with me, they say really proudly, almost like they want my validation, like, oh, I've been reading how to win friends and influence people. So then I like, not to not to trip them up, but I always say like, oh yeah, what have you learned? And they're like, oh, um, uh, to, to, to um, you know, just to like um, be social and to make friends with people. So I'm like, okay, you've spent the minutes sat there reading, but what you've been doing is you've been doing it distracted. You keep checking your phone. You're not actually reading properly. And secondly, after you've read the principle, you're taking no attempt to actually go and use the principle to date. I don't know many people who have actually done this. Most people will stay in the comfort of learning because learning and consuming is entirely comfortable and we don't grow from comfort, we grow from discomfort. If you want this to work for you, you must start looking forward to the discomfort of using what you've learned. So let's say the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, you know, you're gonna read the principle, the exact thing you need to do, which is so, so important, get up. That's what you need to do. Most people will stay on their computer chair. Most people will stay on their bed just reading and reading and reading and wondering, oh, like, oh, it, it doesn't even work. It doesn't even work. The book didn't even do it. Yeah, because you didn't use any of it. After you learn something in one of these books, you learn something in, let's say, a TED talk or a, a course on social skills and, and influence and leadership, you have to get up. It's so basic. You literally have to get up and do something. If you learn something and you carry on learning, you're not learning. If you learn something, you get up and whatever you learn, you go through the discomfort of actually trying to use it on someone, fantastic. You're gonna make some great progress. And to be honest, if that's the type of guy you are, like I want you in my circle. And this stage, in stage two, you're gonna reduce social anxiety. Now social anxiety, honestly, is not really real. Like it's something you feel, but it, it's hard to explain. I think at this point, you wouldn't really believe me because people identify, people say, oh, I have social anxiety. But the fact that you're saying it is mostly why you have it. Because what is social anxiety? It's, it's a feeling, it's just feelings inside of your body, mostly of things like nerves, just feeling nervousness. Now, people think that that's weird. People like to say to themselves, oh, I've got social anxiety, so I, I can't do this. I can't make friends. I've got social anxiety. What you're feeling is completely normal by attaching this label of i've got social anxiety you're making it worse for yourself honestly i don't know a single person there aren't many people who would have some kind of clinical cause of like this mental illness there aren't there are almost i don't know if there is like a clinical social anxiety there is clinical anxiety but there aren't many people who have clinical anxiety it's especially social anxiety if you if you get intrusive thoughts about violence and abuse fair enough but most people don't have that most people it's just that it's like a nice thing that they say where it's like oh you know what i'm i'm a, i'm an introvert so i'm not good at making friends no no the reason you're saying you're not good at friends because you haven't done these two previous stages because you're not even progressive overloading you're not leveling up your social skills it's not that you're an introvert it's nothing about genetics really this is the excuse that this is the ego that people bring in this stage is that they blame it on genetics they say oh you know there's social skills and there's practicing but i can't be good at it because my genetics are bad well have you maximized as much as you could this is a limiting belief have you done as much as you could 
to date, there is no one who could say yes to that question. There is not a single person who could say yes. I have done literally 100% as much as I could, but my genetics hold me back. Because you know why? Because there are people who are, who are critically disabled. There are people who, are, who literally have started at a worse genetic level, 100 times worse than you, and they're in the Paralympics. They're actually achieving things in their lives because your genetics doesn't actually hold you back that much. It's mostly just an excuse. And your genetics links with this argument of, oh, but I've, but I've got social anxiety. I'm an introvert, so I can't do this. But how, how many, but how many hours have you spent leveling up your social skills? How many times have you left your house to actually use the principles on someone else? Be honest to yourself right now. Now, I know it sounds like I'm critiquing you and you're thinking you might be a little bit defensive. This is for your benefit. Ask yourself this one question right now. How many hours have I spent doing this? Have I actually maximized my genetic potential. And your ego wants you to say yes, because it's just easier for you. Then you don't need to suffer the discomfort from this. Your ego just wants to say, yes, we, we, we've done as much as we could. So you don't need to listen to this guy, but you've watched this far because you know for a fact that the ego is wrong, that that feeling inside of you is probably wrong. And, you, and deep down inside you're thinking, you know what? How much have I actually done for this? Like I've been in university for a couple of years. I've spent, I spent Monday to Friday doing this career, this job, and you know, I've spent an hour and a half, five times a week in the gym. How many, have I ever had a week's workout for social skills? Have I ever even spent an hour and a half specifically leveling up my social skills? Because up until less than a year ago, I could not say that I did. And could you? Be honest, could you? Most people would say, yeah, but I've read How to Win Friends and Influence People and it didn't work for me. Well, that's because you didn't practice. You stayed inside of comfort and you didn't get up from that. There is no one who could say that I've been reading these books, I've been doing the social skills, I've been leveling it all up, learning, and I've been getting up immediately, practicing it, and it didn't work because by getting up and practicing it, it works. So in this stage, stage two, I highly, highly recommend you start looking into learning about cold approach. Now you don't have to do this and it might feel like, you know, you're, maybe you're doing too many different things. The reason why I'd suggest this is because you're gonna be going out walking anyway. You're gonna be going out walking, talking to people anyway. You're gonna be learning about social skills. You may as well start learning a bit about cold approaching. This is where it gets interesting because now now all the, the, the horny little guys have piped up. Like, wait, wait, I might get some pussy from this. And yes, you actually will. Because imagine what we're doing right now. We're getting you outside every single day talking to strangers. Now you're just saying pleasantries to them because maybe most of the strangers outside your house are gonna be like middle-aged people taking their dogs out for a walk. But you are gonna come across some attractive women and you could do the normal social skills things to them, but or you could learn specifically about cold approaching attractive women doing it with like a direct manner and actually start getting numbers and lays from this. And that's exactly what I started doing last year and, and it works much better than I originally thought. So in brief, what you're gonna be doing in stage two is leveling up your social skills. You're gonna start practicing it immediately. You're gonna be reading books like how to win friends and influence people. You're gonna be looking into like TED talks and documentaries and courses to level up your social skills. All we're gonna be doing is putting a big effort to level up your social skills. I'm gonna be completely honest to you. Stage two lasts for months. It's not gonna be quick. You were probably hoping for this to be that quick. Oh, the one thing you've gotta to say to the girl to get the text back and the one thing, right? There is no one thing. If you were expecting this to be quick, you're on the wrong channel. We don't go for like the fucking shortcuts here. There is no quick fix to your social life because how many years have you spent without leveling up your social life? How old are you? That's how many years you spent without leveling up your social life. So it's gonna take at least months to start reversing the damage that you that the internet has done to you, that the environment that we're in of like, we're so socially recluse from each other. It's gonna take a few months. I know it's unsexy. I know you were expecting it to be, you know, oh, like a few weeks, but the good thing about this is that as the months go along, you will get successes. It's kind of like how your body transformation takes months and years, but that scares a lot of people off and they're like, oh, but, but, but it's gonna take me two months to lose 10 pounds of fat. The time's gonna go anyway. It's literally like in two months time, it's gonna be two months. Now you could either do the action so that you're making the progress as we go along, or you could not. But either way, the time's going on. And the thing is, as the time goes on, yes, your end goal will take months, maybe years, but you're gonna be getting these small wins, which 
are going to seem pretty significant because you're going to be making new friends, you're going to be sleeping with girls that you approach. These small wins are going to seem significant. And so it's your choice. The time's going to go anyway. You could either be getting these small wins with the big win at the end, or you could just say, oh no, it's, a, it's going to take too long. And then the time's going to pass anyway. So here's where we are right now. Stage one, recluse, you just stayed in all the time. Now we've gotten you going on walks, progressively overloading your social skills, holding eye contact, speaking to people. Stage two, we've now finally gotten you to understand what social skills are and exactly the mindset and the education to actually start making friends. And you've also started cold approaching. Now we're going to go into stage three. Stage three is all about value. We're going to start to give value to other people. This is so, so hugely important. Now, if you've gotten to this stage, you're going to know why I just highlighted this because most people who may be watching still, but most people think that to get friends, they only focus on what they want. If you focus on what you want, you will be lonely for the rest of your life. If you focus on what other people want, you will be popular for the rest of your life. And it sounds so basic. What I've just said probably doesn't mean much to you. And if it doesn't, you need to go back because your education level, the stage two isn't complete yet. And so the question at this stage is what value could you give to other people? Now, again, if it doesn't really shoot out, if you're a bit confused by this, don't, don't let this hurt your ego. You're still in stage two. You still need to learn a little bit more, but I'll give you a very, very brief, in case as you know you wanna watch it all, I'll give you like a very brief summary. The summary of stage two, the main mindset of social skills is to focus on the other person. Be in, put yourself in their shoes, their life, and think, okay, imagine you are that person. What do they want? We think about what we want and that's why we struggle with social skills, with making friends and that's why we suffer from loneliness because no one cares what you want. So this stage of stage three is after you've realized that now we're gonna focus entirely on what they want. And so ask yourself, what do they want? First of all, it'd be nice for you to answer, who is they? Who is your target? What type of person are you trying to meet? Visualize it, imagine this guy, what, what is his characteristics? And then what does he want? I'll tell you my specific real life example and you can hopefully take some ideas from this. My they, my target was guys around my age, so let's say about, you know, 20s, let's say, who like to work out because I wanted guys to work out with. I got the gym rings, so you might have seen some clip. I'll have like a little clip just pop up on screen right now so you can see. I, had, I got these gym rings in the middle of the lockdown. I was hitting them, it was really fun, and I wanted some guys to hit them with. And so I started thinking, okay, I want guys who are roughly my age, who like to work out, build some muscle, and they'd like to come train with me. Really, I've just told you what the secret was. So this is the guys, and then I thought, okay, what's the value that I can give? Well, I can invite them to the gym rings workout. So I started messaging guys. So I started training by myself, and when guys would walk past, I'd shout them over and say, like, yo, bro, do you want to hit some pull-ups? And literally, I know it sounds so basic, but every single person's face lit up. It was like they were so incredibly happy. Because think about this, this was in the middle of the lockdown. Wouldn't you be happy about that? If there was like a guy who was training, who was pretty muscular, who was training in the park, he smiled at you, you smiled at him, and he said, oh yeah, try to come join me for a workout. I would be so, so happy if a guy said that to me. And maybe if you've got a bit of anxiety, you're thinking, oh, but, but he might try to rape you. But <laughs> whatever, I'm not gonna try and disprove that. It made people so happy and because of this, I then had a couple of guys who started meeting me for the rings. And one of the first guys who I invited, he walked past me because, I, because literally, I'll be honest, I didn't really fully invite him. What happened was that I was just training outside because I followed this stage. I followed this stage of just being outside my house more. So I started going on walks. I got the gym rings. And then really the best, the best thing of this was that I started working out outdoors so i was working out outdoors and this guy literally just walked past and he actually asked me a question about it and he was like oh yeah you got rings i've got them too i started training with him he's become one of my best friends we literally train with each other like two three four times a week and we we literally make muscle together and when this woman and when this girl's walking past i always approach them now how sick is that and think about how like think about how different my life has changed because i've been following just the first three stages and so this is the stage stage three with value, once you start giving value to people, this is the stage where you get benefits. This is the stage where the benefits really start to become apparent in your life. You make more friends. You fuck more girls. Quite frankly, it's very, very true because you're already outside more and you're making a bit of a social circle outside. You're gonna to start to approach and actually become successful with it. You're gonna to start to pursue goals 
with these friends because these friends you know you've actually targeted them properly you thought about what's what's my target audience well my target audience would be guys who are similar to me and if they're similar to me they'll have the same goals as me so one of my goals is to build a physique you know to build like be a bodybuilder this guy had exactly the same goals so I now have someone to train with to build muscle with and the importance of this stage realize why this stage is called value the importance of this is that this will all only happen if you are the one providing value. You must be bringing something to the table. If you're not bringing something to the table, there's no point. It, it, why would anyone then come to your table? Look, here, here's my friend and here's me. I've brought the table. And so he's like, oh, nice table. Can I, can I use the table with you? Because I like tables. And you're like, yeah, yeah, sound. Imagine if you didn't bring the table. Imagine if you were just there and you were like, oh, so, um, what can you do for me? Because that's the vibe that most guys give off. That is literally the cringy vibe that most lonely guys give off is they'll meet someone new and they have this vibe of like, okay, um, do things for me. You got any women? You got any beers? That's what most guys are like. Now, the successful guys who start to realize because of the learning period, because of the stage two, they realize, okay, I have to do things for the other person. And so what can I do to the other person? I can bring value to them. My, my other person cares about making muscle, so I'm gonna be the one organizing workouts. And so in stage three, this is a big improvement. You could actually stop here. You don't actually need to carry on because a lot of guys will happily stop here and you can. But if you wanna become the most popular you've ever been before, if you wanna start leading the tribe, we're gonna move on now to stage four. And this stage is very, very interesting. I'm, I'm actually very proud of myself for thinking about this. Stage four, is scale. So at this previous stage of stage three, you're giving value to people in real life. So far, pretty much everything has been in real life. But the reason why I suggest you go from the online world to real life is because when you're in the online world, you, you've already been there before, you're already an internet addict. And how popular are you right now? It's got too many distractions for you to actually be productive to create the scale right now. But after you've learned, you've been through the trials and tribulations of the first three stages and you understand the type of value, now is your choice to think, okay, I could stay at stage three, just, you know, giving value to people in, in real life every week, maybe meeting one or two guys. But you're realizing that your, your outreach, your ability to meet new people is limited by your own environment. So here's you. This is reasonably as far as you could recruit new people to be your friend because you know it's a couple of miles maybe if you've got a car and you don't mind driving so far maybe it's a bit longer but it's roughly just a very small area of influence now you might be happy with that but if you want the best possible we're going to move to scale where now we're going to do the same thing but on the internet because now think about it here's you i can't even draw the circle because the entire page is now the circle the internet consumes everything and so now before we might have had you know let's say a maximum reasonable maximum of like 20 close friends that you've made and you've brought into your circle and 20 guys come and meet you to work and that might that's like exceeding it let's be honest 20 guys come and meet you in the park to work out that's huge right well here you know this big ass like the entire thing is the circle now well it's unlimited but let's say reasonably it's thousands it's millions because it's on the internet, it's, it's got infinite scale. So what we're gonna be doing in stage four is moving the value from stage three online. And we're gonna do this through content creation, which in a very, very simple way means to make YouTube videos, to make Instagram posts, to make podcasts. And so YouTube was the main one for me and I highly suggest it, but obviously that's my own bias because I've, I've always liked YouTube, I've always liked making videos. And recently I started podcasting and I really, really suggest if you're into the self-improvement, if you're into trying to find, you know, the guys who are working hard, if you're one of these guys, these two will have the guys that you're looking for because you could, for example, do this on Twitter or on Instagram. The issue with that is that if, for example, you're into the same things as me as self-improvement, you won't actually be on here. And so if you do find any guys who seem similar to you on these platforms, they can't be that similar to you because they're using social medias that you actually want to get away from. And so that's why I suggest YouTube with these longer form educational videos, because any guy who's watched this far of this video is a lot like me. Not only are you watching my personality, so you must at least vibe with how I talk and how I present myself, Myself. But if you've watched this far and you're actually enjoying this education and you're actually interested in it, it means you're very, very similar to me. At least for me, I couldn't personally like do this on these.
shitty, smaller, more vanity metric social medias. But YouTube, long videos, absolutely. Podcasting as well, absolutely. And so stage four is all about scaling the value that you were previously just giving in your community, now putting it online and you have an outreach of unlimited. So again, what I'm gonna do for you is I'm gonna just briefly talk about my own journey, I'm going to say it and hopefully as I say it, you'll be getting ideas of what you could do. A year ago, I was in the, the worst period of my life with like pretty major depression, anxiety, addictions. I was smoking weed every single day. I was jacking off, like fapping like for four times a day. I was on 4chan, literally jacking off to messed up porn. I experienced the height of the self-improvement depression. And a few guys watching this can probably relate. I experienced that. I fixed it all by myself. Most of the YouTube videos that I watch were fucking trash. And so that was my motivation to create content, to scale what I could teach to others because I kept on finding myself wanting to give this value to people I'd meet in person. And it would work. I'd, you know, I'd speak to people in person. So, you know, this, this one best friend, I'd give him self-improvement advice. I got him working hard and meditating because he used to meditate earlier, but he, he stopped a little bit. So I was teaching him this stuff and it was good, but it wasn't enough. I wanted to help more people. Even with my own selfishness, I, I wanted more friends. I wanted more benefits for myself as well. And so what I then did was that I made a YouTube channel and I just started teaching what I had learned from this period. And that's what you're watching right now on this YouTube channel. That's exactly the purpose of this. And so think about the implications of that. With something like YouTube, you build up an audience of people who like what you've been teaching them. If you like what I've been teaching you, if you like content about this stuff right here, you're similar to me. That means that me and you love each other. There you go. <laughs> so what's happened is that I've created an audience of people who, who literally love me, of people who value what I've been saying, who, say, who say to me that I've changed their lives. And now they're all in my audience. And they're all, you know, a lot of them are grateful for the help that I've gave them on YouTube, for the advice that I've put out there. And th but this means that here's me. And now I've got like an audience that you at this stage of, of at this stage in stage four, you'll, you'll start to get an audience of some guys who you've actually changed their lives off. And it won't be huge just yet, but it's scaling a lot, lot faster than it would be if you just relied on stage three and trying to do this in person. So the time frame of this stage fluctuates. It could be a long time and it could be almost nothing because it just this is like too random for me to give you advice on because of the type of value that you're giving out how, how quality the value is that the platform that you use you know the youtube algorithm can bless your video and get you like really really famous almost immediately or it could almost like fuck your entire channel and then you just don't make much progress but either way at this stage the mindset i want you to have is produce at least two pieces of content per week that's it and that's so, so simple. That's what you gotta do. And just make sure that the pieces of content here are full of value for your target audience. That's, that's the one mindset you've gotta think. You're not doing YouTube for you. You're not making this content, this podcast for you. Most people, when they start a podcast and they quit after like two weeks, it's because they think, oh, I'd like to do a podcast. But no one cares that you'd like to do a podcast. No one cares about you. What can you give to other people? Then they'll come, then they'll care about you. So you might notice that a lot of the times, even though I talk about myself quite a lot in my videos, it's always aimed at your benefit. I don't just like talk about myself for the sake of talking about myself. It's for your education. I made a podcast and instead of doing the, the stupid podcast shit where like you just waste so much time, I ask the person who's, who's my guest questions that would benefit the listener, not just what he wants to talk about or what I want to talk about. It's entirely focused on the value that the target gets. And the target is literally just the type of men that you're trying to attract to your tribe. This is the one thing crucial thing right now in all of this it's all about giving value to your target if you you'll, you'll you will drift by the way well it's almost like it's hard for me to explain it maybe i can draw it actually i imagine it like this here is where you want to be this is like the good mindset of value and i keep drifting from it because the natural impulse is to start thinking about me start thinking about me me think about my money Think about my my growth, my business growth. Think about this, 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 this. You always will keep deviating from it. You have to make sure that every time you realize you go back to it, you go back to the whole thing of just giving the target value. If you keep going back here, you will grow. 
you will grow an audience, you will keep helping these people, you will literally start giving them life-changing value. Now, one mindset is that people will feel like I'm not ready. This is usually the most common thing that people say when I advise them like, oh yeah, you should be creating content, you should be teaching other people what you've learned. They're like, oh, but um, uh, the excuses. Oh, not now, but later, I, oh, maybe, maybe I'll do it later. Maybe, I, you know, what? after I make lots of muscle, Hamza, it's, it's, if you're onto the red pill, you know the mindset which a lot of dumbasses say is, oh, I can't approach girls just yet, but wait, give me five years, let me build my body, then I'll do it. What do we say to guys like that? It's like, not only are you a little bitch, but oh, you are literally negatively affecting your life because you're afraid of going through that discomfort right now. And you're tr and the, the worst thing is that your ego, you're making excuses for it, that will that are like, we can't argue against it because you're like, no, 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 because it, it, it it's not that I'm, I'm a pussy. It's just that I've got 700 IQ and I know for a fact it'll be more efficient if I work out for five years before I go and approach. Or, oh no, Hamza, I'm not ready to make a YouTube channel. What I'll do is I'll wait a couple of years and then I'll do it because then I'll be better. No, no, no. The whole point is you've got to start this type of stuff before you feel ready. That's the mindset is that do it before you feel ready. That's with cold approaching as well. If you think, oh, I'm gonna approach when I'm ready, you're not gonna approach. The whole, the purposeful mindset is to approach before you're ready. Get used to approaching when you don't feel like it. Get used to creating content when you don't feel like it. And then you'll start being good at it when you feel like it. If you're waiting up until you feel ready, you're not gonna feel ready. That's the reason why I don't have a fitness YouTube channel because that was literally my dream for as long as possible. It was, it was my dream. But I was like, oh no, I'm not big enough yet. I'm not big enough, I need more muscle. Maybe after this bulk, Maybe after this cup, maybe after this bulk, maybe after this cup, maybe when I reach two plate bench, maybe with this, you're never gonna feel ready. You have to purposely do it when you don't feel ready. I wasted years of my life by waiting for this ready moment till eventually I still wasn't ready, but I was like, wait, I've literally wanted to be a YouTuber for all of my teenage and adult life. And I keep putting it off because I keep saying like, I need some requirement first, but guess what? People want to see you when you aren't ready. They People want to see someone who isn't at like self-actualization. They want to see someone who's just slightly above them. That's so much more relatable to them is that people want to see someone who's more relatable to them. If you're so far above the people you're teaching, they can't relate to you. And it's like, it's it, it's been a while since you've been like them. And so your advice to them isn't as good. People want to see someone who's just one stage above them. If you've done stage three you are one stage above most other people and so essentially you can start teaching exactly what you've done here that's literally exactly what i did i was teaching in stage four of scale i was teaching stage three on how to give value to other people you can see in my old videos where i was literally tell like it might if you've been a, a subscriber of mine for a while you probably can recognize all this process over here because I've made videos on this exact process with making friends through going outside and just inviting people to do stuff. I was in stage three, then in stage four, I started teaching people stage three. You only need to be one stage in front of people to teach them. And if you can start doing this, you enter a very beautiful moment where now you've moved on to stage five and you are now the tribe leader. You've been creating content, you've been scaling the value that you give to others for a while probably months, maybe close to a year. But as you've been doing that, your audience has started to go up and up and up and up and up. And pretty soon, before you know it, you've actually got more in bandy cam cuz. And pretty soon, before you know it, you've actually got more of an audience than you know what to deal with. And this audience, they're not just subscribers and people who comment and like, they're not just, you know, just people who are watching your video. These people are your fans. These people are your, are your tribe members. They trust you, they like you, they will pay your bills. They will literally give you money because you've changed their lives. You change their lives first. You don't ask for money first, you change their lives first. And then they will literally pay your bills and suddenly you are a full-time content creator. You're a full-time YouTuber. Congratulations, your, your dream has literally been accomplished. Whatever like you chose, whether it was like some Instagram po profile or maybe a blog or a podcast, that is now your full-time job because you've helped enough people, you've changed enough lives. And when you change lives, people are like, oh, he's, he's selling this thing for a couple of pounds, I'll do it. Oh, he linked this course, oh, he says it's good. I'm gonna click on it because this guy's literally saved my life. I had depression before. He's telling me to check this course out that he's made. I'm gonna go and look at it. There's a reason why you've watched so far of this video right now because you actually trust what I'm saying. Now you might be a new subscriber, but chances are 
are. You've seen me around before and you're here because you, you like me. You trust me, you like me. And maybe I started to positively impact your life. Maybe not fully yet, but as you really follow the actionable steps that I'm giving you, your life will change. Now, let's say in three months time that you, you are the most social you've ever been. You're the most happy you've ever been because of a few things you followed of me. And I make a book that I'm selling for three pounds, which seems helpful to you. You're probably going to buy it because you're probably going to think, you know what? This guy has actually really, really positively impacted my life. It's not so expensive. I can afford it. Yeah, may as well. And guess what? You, along with 100 people, 200 people, 500, 1,000 people will do the same. So imagine if people were doing this for you. Imagine if you were in this position of being the tribe leader. You have done all of this so far all five stages you've done and now you're on to the point of being the leader yourself these are your tribe members they trust you they love you they they're grateful for you they feel indebted to you because of the fact that you scaled the value imagine a very very simple scenario where you are the the tribe leader in a party you've invited everyone to the party well if someone brings a crate of beers they're going to give you some because you have changed their life. You give them value by give, hosting the party. And so they're going to pay you back with what they can. And so if there was one person who, weird metric, but if there was one person in the party who got the most free drinks, it'd probably be you. So at this stage, in stage five as the tribe leader, you're going to have hundreds of followers. So what's actually going to happen, let me just tell you, is that how many subscribers followers you know of the imagine youtube subscribers imagine instagram subscribers imagine web page i don't know subscribers podcast listeners whatever usually that total number is mostly of inactive people and so the full subscriber number mine is roughly 2200 it's usually roughly around 20 percent of your full number is active so that's that's the metric that you want to just be seeing roughly 20 percent is active so how many subscribers you have roughly 20 percent of them are going to be active how many podcast subscribers or, or instagram followers or twitter you know whatever you're doing roughly 20 percent is going to be active people who really trust you like you and respect you and they'll they'll follow what you say so this for me is i've got about 2200 subscribers about 20 percent, which means roughly 400 will be loyal like not loyal but roughly 400 will be like active people who consistently watch my videos which it does seem to be true if you look at my videos you can just see roughly 400 views so it makes sense it's never the full amount it's never anywhere close to the full amount because you aren't the only person that they're currently following but you could get this to a better proportion so instead of 20 you start getting 30 percent of people being active or 40 percent by what i'm about to teach you right now so at this point you still still completely focus on their value and you start to organize events and this is where you will now start to feel more popular than ever and this is the stage that i've got to where instead of just being the normal youtuber who just does the videos you start to bring your people together so for example what i do is group calls every sunday i do like a self-improvement group call i made a discord we've got about 200 people in this discord and a solid let's say at least 20 are active every single day every single day and i'd say a solid like 50 we could call are like pretty active on it like if you go onto it every single time you go onto it there's new messages and all these people are helping each other they're all there right every now and then i'm in one of these right and it hits me it hits me that this isn't just a group this isn't just you know a group of guys this is my group they are here because of me like every now and then it hits me when I'm on a group call and there's like seven guys talking about self-improvement or there's sometimes there's like 12 people and I'm literally, you know, hearing them and talk. It literally hits me like, these are my boys. They're literally here together because I've brought them together. Do you know how much power, how much power and influence there is in that? Like how powerful you feel and how much responsibility you take when this is your life. And now think about the extra rewards, which you might not have thought of. Being the tribe leader, and having an audience of people who follow you gives you leverage. Leverage means that you're gonna be able to get inside and start collaborating with other tribe leaders. Think about how awesome that is. In a, in a very simple sense, let's say I am currently a tribe leader. We got Hamza. And I've got an audience of like 2,200, right? Well, there's probably another tribe over there with their tribe leader called Adonis. He's got 3,000 subscribers. And we're like, I message him like, yo, come onto my podcast. Let's have a little talk. Let's do this. I like what you're doing. Like, you know, I'm using the same value principle. I'm not just saying, hey, hey, um, you got any followers I can have? Obviously not. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about him. I'm saying, I'll, you know what? Right now, I will have a audio recording play 
of exactly how I've done this so you can see the exact script that I've used. I will literally have it playing right now. Hey, Aaron, I hope you're doing well. I've just seen your content on YouTube and I've got to say, man, I am well and truly impressed. I've just seen the video of you hitting the gymnastic rings workout as well. So, man, I am a self-improvement coach. I've got a little podcast. So I've got a audience now of 1,850 young men who are all on the self-improvement. They're all into entrepreneurship. A lot of them want to become digital nomads just like yourself so i was wondering if you'd like to be a guest on my podcast obviously we'll speak about this online income lifestyle i'll link your content so you're bound to get a couple of guys who will click the link and become true fan of yours and it'd be really really nice for you because it'll be another piece of content that's online so it's going to increase your online presence in case anyone searches up your name let me know how that sounds. So you can see by that, that is how I invite people to the podcast. And notice, did I say anything about my benefit? Did I say, oh, it would be, you know, um, I'd really like it if you came onto the podcast, it would really help me grow. No, I said, if you come onto the podcast, I'll be sending people your way. A few of those people will become true fans of yours. And it'll be another place where content of yours linked to your name is going to be online. I talked entirely of their value. And so guess what? I have these people, these influencers who have got double my audience size coming to me excitedly wanting to be on my podcast and my podcast literally has like 50 subscribers but just because I've done it in a way that it talks about their benefit they're down for it when you're a tribe leader and you've got an audience of people who like you and trust you you've got leverage you finally got some power in your life and this leverage is going to compound exponentially because this leverage is going to lead to collaborations with other tribe leaders and that is going to give you more leverage because when you collab with someone you're going to get some of their followers and then more again and then more and then more and then more so taking this level of responsibility skyrockets your confidence you're going to feel like a leader your influence your self-esteem all of this is going to go up and it's probably bro science but I've said before that when you take responsibility, your testosterone goes up. Because think about it, in the animal kingdom, what male has the most testosterone? The alpha male. The alpha male is responsible for the tribe. The alpha male is the tribe leader. And the alpha male needs the most testosterone. So his body will probably produce more testosterone because he needs it. And so it's a weird, weird example, but there's a reason why my beard grew when I started doing this. My entire life, I was only able to grow like such a shitty little beard. But when I started taking responsibility, when I became this tribe leader, my beard grew and I look a few years older in the last few months and in a good way, not even, you know, like people just aging too fast. I look in a good way. I'm literally pulling MILFs on Bumble and Tinder. The boys on Discord know that this is true. I'm pulling MILFs on Bumble, Tinder, I'm meeting them up. I'm passing for 40. Obviously, they know that I'm not 40 years old, but I've made my dating profile that I'm 43 years old. They're still right swiping me and I'm getting more right swipes than ever. And they're meeting me and they're like, oh, um, you know, I know, how old are you? And they know that I'm not 43, but it's like, they don't even mind because I seem older, because I've taken responsibility, because what 23 year old do you know has this kind of responsibility? So it matures you. What a great pursuit to be in. So think about then what normal life looks at at stage five when you're the tribe leader. You've got a huge group, a huge following of people who trust you. So when you organize any kind of events, people will come. And not only will they come, when you invite people to this event, they will actually see it as a gift. Because imagine imagine right now, if I messaged anyone who was watching, I was like, oh, bro, come join our group call. I want you to join. They would be not only just accepting of that, they would be excited for it because the 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 tribe leader, the big alpha male, is it's kind of cringy to say the alpha male, but it is essentially what we're doing here. You're becoming the alpha male of your group. And when the alpha male pays some attention to any of the guys who look up to him, they're gonna feel important. And if they get an invite to something that you've started, they're gonna be so grateful for it. And so they're gonna like you even more. And so for the past few minutes, I've been talking about the tribe leader being in stage five. Now you might be listening to me and thinking, you know what, like, nah, like, doesn't sound like me not me. And so to that, I say, you're right. Not you. You aren't ready yet. There aren't many people who could be in this position. And if you were, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. Your ego could be hurt by that, but it literally just means you're currently in one of these stages right over here. Maybe you're in stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. You're not at this stage. And now you might be, you know, as I'm explaining what being a tribe leader is like, you might feel a little bit sort of intimidated by it. You might think like, oh, I'm not sure if I actually want that. And maybe you don't, but it'd be good to set it up so that your future self could at least experience it. 
by going through the earlier stages, you're, you're setting your future self up to at least have the option to be the tribe leader and see. And right now, it might be intimidating. It might be scary to think that you've, you've got hundreds of people, but it won't be like this. What you're thinking is that, oh, your current life, you're, you can only think about your current life. and you're, you're thinking your current life is not compatible with this. And so it scares you. But that's, of course, the, the point is that by the time you could do this, you are no longer the same as your current life. You're in the upgraded life. And when you've got the upgraded life and you've got the extra confidence and you've been, you know, you've been scaling the help, you've made like a little friendship group in person with stage three, in stage four your life's going to be changed and you might actually crave this you might be a little off put by it just yet you might be a little bit scared of it just know that it's because you might be like a, a stage or two backwards and so it's time to identify which stage you're at and hopefully you can now see that there's a clear path to level up these stages and to get to the golden point of being your own tribe leader and when you're here the benefits are immense and so what is this all for this entire thing we've got here starting from stage one recluse to all the way to stage five tribe leader. What's it all for? We're in the middle of the lockdown right now and I believe it might go off soon. I don't keep up to date with the news or anything, so it might go off soon, it might not, right? Well, COVID is eventually gonna end and most people, this is so cliche, everyone's been saying this, most people are using it as an excuse. What's gonna happen once it opens up again? It's It's been dubbed the summer of love where People are gonna be fucking, people are gonna be making friends, with people are gonna be social, all of the events, any kind of festival or party or club or anything, it's gonna be sold out. And now most people have been going down during this time. Most guys have been losing friends, losing girls, gaining weight, losing muscle, losing confidence, losing social skills. You're gonna be one of the very few people who have went up during this time. Now, if you're in self-improvement, that's the case, right? Well, if you follow this guide and you get to stage five by the time it's all over, not only have you been going up whilst other people have been going down, you're going to leave the COVID lockdown with hundreds of guys in your tribe. You are now the tribe leader. In the middle of the lockdown, you are more popular than you've ever been before. This is realistic. You are watching a video of a guy who's done exactly that. There's a reason why I can tell you in so much detail how to do all this, because this is the position I'm at right now. I went into lockdown the most lonely I've ever been in my entire life. I would cry about it. I'm going to leave lockdown as a tribe leader with a couple hundred active guys who follow what I say. They, they trust me, they like me. They appreciate me, they're grateful for me. So what's gonna happen when the lockdown ends and we're allowed to do stuff, we're allowed to do social stuff, there's gonna be events, social events. Let's say there's a, there's a festival. I'm gonna go to this festival and I'm gonna announce that I'm going. I'm gonna tell all the boys on Discord, all the boys on YouTube that I'm going. And when I get there, there's gonna be about 10, maybe 20 people, 20 guys in my group. The most I've ever had before was like four. And those like couple of guys that I was with before weren't close friends. It was just guys to go with, you know, to go out with, to drink with. This is gonna be guys whose lives that I have changed, who have changed my life. Imagine how hype that is gonna be to have this type of group. I've got the boys in Discord already saying that they want to go, they want me to organize a, a UK camping trip. And so imagine we go camping and like 10 people come, 10 people, five guys, five guys who are in my group who want to come camping with me. The possibilities are endless. Getting popular seems vain. It seems like a vanity goal. And it, it really just depends on what kind of popular you want. Because if you want the Instagram likes, you wanted to say like, oh, 35, five or like, you know, 3,500 likes. Yes, it's the vanity metric. But if all of this pursuit to be popular was just to have more guys in your life who you want to be part of a tribe, you want to feel connected to people, you want that social life, it is a wonderful pursuit to be in. My life is profoundly better because I went through these stages. You watching this right now have transformed my life. You are the reason why I feel like I'm at stage five. And I want you now to also get to stage five. You realize now my big, the secret YouTuber's plan is right over here. This is why I wanna help you become your own tribe leader because I'm already one. And if you're like a fan of mine, if you become a tribe leader, who are you gonna collab with? Who are you going to like do a podcast with? You're gonna do it with me. So I'm gonna get my own boys to go through this stage so that then we can collab together and we're all gonna grow together. We're all literally gonna make it together. This is literally like the point, I've, I've started a cult by the way. This is the point of multi-level marketing where you then have, you have like one guy gets onto three guys and these three guys get three guys. I've started a multi-level marketing strategy and it's literally, I've been like following cult psychology. I'm creating a cult. 
I'm creating a cult that uses multi-level marketing, but this is the first cult that you've ever seen, which is for the positives that we're just a bunch of young guys who want to stop jacking off, watching porn and stop playing video games and start making friends. This is the first positive cult that you've seen. This is at least the purpose of my aim of popularity was to get more people to go through this, this funnel system so that eventually they'd become their own tribe leaders and then I've got a group of guys around me who have just suddenly become high value and it all started with self-improvement, with my self-improvements and it's all gonna start with your self-improvements. I hope you can see the scale of this. I hope you can see how profound and how important this pursuit is because when you're at that point, when you know, if you've become your tribe leader and me and you are collabing and we're like literally we've become friends and you've got hundreds of people and I've got hundreds of people, well then you're gonna be able to create your own group of guys not only who, you know, who trust you and stuff, but imagine the implications of that. Then imagine that you are the tribe leader who's also creating more tribe leaders and all of these guys are gonna be so grateful for you. And then when these guys do it, they're gonna create more tribe leaders. They're gonna create more guys on self-improvement. And these guys are gonna, do you see what's happening here? We are literally starting a revolution of, of a bunch of young guys who are tired of the bullshit of normal life. We're getting into self-improvement, we're working hard. And what we're doing is through like a multi-level marketing, we're then at the point of self-actualization, getting more guys to follow us. And those more guys to follow us are gonna then, you get, you get the point I think by now. That's the point of all this. That's why I want to be popular. <sighs> God damn. I hope you found some life-changing value in this. If you can, identify which stage you're in and don't let your ego change the answer for you because if you can just take your ego out of it if you can hold yourself accountable and be truthful to where you are you will grow it took me a year to get to the end point and i didn't have the roadmap i didn't have this laid out to me i was just see i was throwing shit at the wall and just seeing what stuck you've got the roadmap i sincerely hope it changes your life do the hard work especially when you don't feel like it <laughs>